Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for Preschool Storytime. My name is Caitlin and I work here at EVPL Oakland. So before we get started, you'll see I'm wearing my mask, which I always wear. If you come into the library, you'll see me wearing it. But since I'm here in this room all by myself, and I'm not near anyone, it's okay for me to go ahead and take it off. So I'll go ahead and remove it. And we always want to sanitize our hands after we do that. So we get a good amount on our hands. And then we rub them together all over our hands and all the spaces. And now we're ready. So we'll go ahead and get started with a song, a little hello song. It's to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. Good job. Now, before we get started with our stories, I just want to encourage everyone to go to our website at evpl.org, and then under About Us, at the top of the page, click on Inspiration. There you'll find all kinds of fun activities for your family to do together. That could also be screen-free as well. So we have a weekly alphabet scavenger hunt. There's weekly STEAM challenges, reading lists, and so much more. So go ahead and make sure you check that out. So for our story time today, we'll be using some scarves. So you can use any kind of small uh, piece of cloth that you may have at home. You can use a washcloth or something like that. Anything like that will work. So our first story is called Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Sema, published by Simon & Schuster. So in it, we've got a little unicorn who lives under the ocean with some narwhals. And narwhals are a type of whale that have a big tooth or a horn coming out of their head. This is what they look like. So they kind of remind us of a unicorn, don't they? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. And there he is. He knew early on that he was different from the other narwhals. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food. He doesn't look like he really enjoys to eat squid. And he wasn't a very good swimmer. He doesn't have fins, so it's not as easy for him to swim. But his friends didn't seem to mind, so Kelp decided he wouldn't either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. And he says, I wish I were a better swimmer. Oh no, where do you think he's going? <laughs> Kelp found himself at the surface, closer to land than he'd ever been before. High up on a cliff, he spotted a mysterious sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like kelp. Kelp swam toward land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all. Remember, he's not a very good swimmer. Hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. So he was, he was a little nervous. He had never left the ocean. He was nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures made it look so easy. It wasn't. Who does he try to copy first? That's right, it's a crab. He's trying to crab walk. 
And he tries to hop like a frog. And which animal finally shows him how to walk? That's right, the turtle. He eventually gets the hang of it. Everything on land was strange and beautiful, but also kind of scary. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him. But as he stumbled out of the forest, <gasps> land narwhals! What are they actually? That's right, they're unicorns. And by the looks of it, so are you. That's what he says to Kelp. You're a unicorn too. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. And the older one says, we call them horns. Kelp says, wow. They introduced him to unicorn delicacies and they showed him how to gallop, which is how horses run. There was no doubt that Kelp was in fact a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. Would you want to stay with the unicorns forever? I think it would be pretty fun, but you might miss your family. And that's exactly what happens. But then he remembered all of his friends under the sea. Kelp missed them terribly. So he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. And they tell him, come back soon. Kelp swam toward home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all. Remember, he's not a very good swimmer. Hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. And when you say that, that means that you're nervous and you're anxious. But they welcome him home with a nice banner. Kelp took a deep breath and told his friends the news. He says, it turns out, I'm not a narwhal. I'm a unicorn. And the narwhals say, we already knew that. Of course you're not a narwhal. They took it quite well. They still accepted him. Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he'd experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. Did he want to be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the narwhals? Kelp couldn't decide. What do you think he's gonna pick? I'm not sure, let's see. But then he realized that maybe, just maybe, he didn't have to choose. So he could be friends with both. Great job, everyone. Before we get to our next story, Go ahead and get out your scarf or your washcloth or your piece of cloth, whatever you have. We're gonna do a few activities with them. So first, go ahead and hide your scarf. Hide it anywhere, behind your back, behind your head, under your leg, wherever you want. All right, are they all hidden? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and she doesn't know where to find them, are they? But if you leave them alone, They'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Good job, there are the sheep. All right, go ahead and hide it again. Hide it, hide it, hide it. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. Where are they? And doesn't know where to find them. But if you leave them alone, they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Good job. All right, one more time. Hide it, hide it, hide it, hide it. <clears throat> Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. But if you leave them alone, they'll come home wagging their tails behind them. Great job. All right, go ahead and take your scarf. I'm gonna do one more rhyme before we get to our story. Rain on the grass, wave it down. Rain on the trees, wave it up. Wait, rain on the roof, but not on me. Let it go, good job. So now after the rain comes the sun. Sun on the grass, sun on the trees, 
sun on the roof, but not on me. Great job. And now in the winter, what do we have when it gets really cold outside? That's right, we get snow. So snow on the grass, snow on the trees, snow on the roof, but not on me. And before the snow, as we go into the holiday season, right before then, all the leaves start to fall off the trees, don't they? It gets cold, starts to get a little colder, and all the leaves turn brown. So leaves on the grass, some leaves on the trees, leaves on the roof, but not on me. Great job, everyone. All right, go ahead and wave your scarves up high. <clears throat> wave them down low. Wave them really fast, really fast. Wave them very, very slow. Wave them behind you, make them disappear. Wave them in front. Hello. Now wave them. Goodbye. Goodbye, scarves. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Our next book is called You Don't Want a Unicorn by Amy Dagman, published by Little Brown and Company. Why wouldn't you want a unicorn? If you could have one, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Let's see why this author thinks that wouldn't be a good idea. <clears throat> and look, it looks like he's got a coin. He's going to throw it in the wishing well. And what do you do after you do that? That's right, you make a wish. So let's see. Wait! You were going to wish for a unicorn, weren't you? And his shirt says, I heart unicorn. So of course that's what he wants. But wishing for a unicorn is a big mistake. Just step away and... <gasps> He did it anyway. Uh-oh, things are about to get ugly, trust me. And poof, there's our unicorn. What kind of things do you think will happen? Let's find out. Sure, having a unicorn seems fun at first. All right, it's super fun. Fine, it's awesome, okay. And look, they're flying around. That looks so much fun, but it's not worth it. What you don't know is unicorns shed, they shed sparkles and they scratch. Oh my gosh, look at the couch. And no matter how hard you try, unicorns can't be house trained. Oh no, you do not want that, trust me. What happened? Apparently unicorns poop cupcakes. I don't know about that. Don't even get me started on the jumping, the chewing and the burping. Very destructive, oh my goodness. Hey, not bad, you probably could pull this off if it wasn't for the biggest top secret. Nobody knows about a problem with having a unicorn. And how does the unicorn look? That's right, he looks a little lonely. Unicorns live in groups, and when a unicorn gets lonely, ding, 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 it calls a friend. Poof. No, right when you're thinking this could be double super fun, there's another, poof, and another, poof, and another. Great, now you've unleashed the most destructive force in the universe. Oh no. A unicorn party! Oh geez. Look at how destructive they are, riding on the wall, chewing the carpet. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I told you, why didn't you trust me? Quick. 
Grab your piggy bank. Run. You have to wish them all the way. So where is he going now? That's right. He's probably going back to the wishing well. Poof, 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 poof. Whew. That was a close one. Aw, yeah, that one needs to go back too. It's for the best, trust me. So they give a goodbye hug. Poof. Aw, cheer up. You could get a goldfish or a nice rock or, uh-oh. What do you think he's gonna wish for instead? A dragon. Uh-oh, stop! You don't want one of those either? Trust me! Ah! Poof! And I'm sure you can imagine all kinds of mayhem that a dragon can cause. That's the end. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook and YouTube at EVP Library so you can see all of our story times and see what's coming up. So before we say goodbye, I'd like to do our goodbye song. So we'll need to go ahead and get a rhythm going. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as loud as we can. Goodbye! That was loud. What's opposite of loud? We're gonna be real quiet. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as quiet as we can. Goodbye. That was so good. All right, now we're gonna go as high as we can. Pretend we have a really high squeaky voice. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as high as we can. Goodbye. Very good. And the opposite of up high is down low. Get out your deep voice. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as low as we can. Goodbye. Very good. Now we're gonna go as fast as we can. Whew. Shake it out. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as fast as we can. Goodbye. That was so fast, good job. Now the opposite of fast, we're gonna go real slow. This is the last one. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as slow as we can. Good.